to the Virgo Potenz YouTube channel. If you enjoy this video, I invite you to visit the Virgo Potenz website at virgopotenz.org. Virgo Potenz has articles, traditional Latin Mass resources, transcribed sermons, prayers in English and Latin, narrated videos of the Dolorous Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ by Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, and a spiritual warfare page. I offer the content on the website and YouTube channel for free, but this work is a full-time apostolate and your support is needed. Please prayerfully consider supporting my work by praying for me, becoming a patron of Virgo Potenz on Patreon, and or by purchasing one of my eBooks. If you'd prefer to give me a one-time contribution, I suggest that you do so by buying one of my eBooks. Links to my eBooks as well as to Patreon can be found at virgopotenz.org. May the Virgin Most Powerful guide and protect you. The Ascension of Christ by St. Bonaventure St. Bonaventure, a doctor of the Church, offers a beautiful meditation on the Ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. This great saint teaches us how to contemplate this glorious event from the life of Christ. Mental prayer is food for the soul. May this pious meditation upon a glorious mystery make us more receptive to receiving the infused theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity. Jesus, I believe in thee. Jesus, I trust in thee. Jesus, I hope in thee. Jesus, I love thee. The following Virgo Potenz production is a narrated video of chapter 97 from The Life of Christ by St. Bonaventure, narrated by Tony Capo Bianco. Chapter 97 The Ascension of Our Lord. Concerning the Ascension of Our Lord, it behooves you to rekindle your devotion, and, if you have already striven to be present in spirit, hearing his words and seeing his actions, you must now, more than ever, gather up the powers of your soul in meditating upon this event. Now, this mystery surpasses all the rest, as I shall clearly show you. Let this at least stimulate you to give your attention that now our Lord is about to withdraw his bodily presence, having completed the days of his pilgrimage. Wherefore, his words and actions should be very attentively considered, for every faithful soul ought to regard with watchful eyes her spouse, her Lord and God, when he is about to leave her, contemplating his every word and act with the utmost attention, and with all the affection of her heart, and with increased devotion and lowliness to commend herself to him, totally withdrawing her thoughts from all other subjects. Thus, on the fortieth day after the resurrection, the Lord Jesus, knowing that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. Therefore, taking with him from the earthly paradise the holy fathers and other souls, and giving his blessing to Elias and Enoch, who remained there, and still lived on, he came to his disciples, who were in the upper room at Mount Zion, with his mother and others, and appearing to them, he manifested a desire before his departure to sit at meat with them, in token of his loving remembrance of them and joy in their company. Whilst all were eating and rejoicing in this last feast with their Lord, the Lord Jesus says to them, It is time that I return to him who sent me, but you remain in this city until ye be endued with the power from on high. For within a few days ye shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, as I have promised you. Afterwards, ye shall go through all the world preaching my gospel, baptizing those who believe, and ye shall be witnesses to me, even to the ends of the earth. Also he upbraided them for their unbelief, because they believed not those who had seen him risen, namely his angels. This he does with an express purpose when he was speaking to them of preaching, as though he would have them understand him to say, much more ought you to have believed angels, even before you saw me, than the Gentiles to believe your preaching, which they will do without seeing me. In doing this, 
he had the further purpose of making them more humble through the consciousness of their fault, thus giving them, at his departure, a last instance of his love of humility, and in what an especial manner he willed that it should be cultivated. But when they asked him about the future, he would not answer them, because it was not expedient for them to know it. Thus they remained together, eating, speaking, rejoicing before the presence of their Lord, but yet ill at ease through the thought of his departure. For they loved him with such a tender love that they could not even bear the mention of his leaving them without being overcome by it. But what shall I say of his mother, who was happily near him at this meal, and of course loved him in a way none other could? Must not these words about going away have touched her very keenly, as we may image her reclining with her head upon her son's breast, full of maternal affection? For if John did this at the supper, much more may we conceive that she might have thus reclined now, and that she begged him with many sighs and tears, If thou must go, take me with thee. And our Lord comforted her, I pray thee, most beloved mother, grieve not at my departure, for I go to the Father. You must remain a time, confirming others in what thou knowest of me, and then afterwards I will come to thee and receive thee to glory. To which she replied, Thy will be done, most beloved son. I am ready not only to remain, but to die, if I may benefit those for whom thou hast died. But remember me. Then the Lord comforted her, the disciples, Magdalene, and the other women, saying, Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I will not leave you comfortless. I go away, and I will come to you again. I will be with you always. At length he says to them that they should go forth to the Mount of Olives, for it was from thence he willed to ascend. And then he disappeared from them. Then his mother and all the rest, without delay, went to the appointed mount, which is from Jerusalem, about a league. And there again the Lord appeared to them. Lo, on this day you have two appearances. He then, we can imagine, embraced his mother and bade her adieu. And his mother most tenderly parted from him. But the disciples and Magdalene and the rest fell down and gave vent to their grief, kissing his feet. Then he raised up his apostles and embraced them graciously. Behold them now attentively and all that happens. Consider also the holy fathers as present, though invisibly, and with what joy and reverence they regard the Lord's mother and affectionately bless her, through whose instrumentality they have obtained so great a benefit. Consider also how they eye those exalted champions and leaders of the divine army, whom our Lord chose out of all to attack and subdue the whole world. At last, when all these mysteries had been accomplished, the Lord Jesus was to be withdrawn from them and to ascend by his own power. Then his mother and all the others fell to the ground, and she said, My son, ever-blessed son, remember me. At his departure she could not refrain from tears, and yet she greatly rejoiced, because she saw her son ascend thus gloriously into heaven. And likewise his disciples said, O Lord, for thee we have left all things, be mindful of us. But he, with uplifted hands and serene and joyous face, crowned with royalty and beauty, was triumphantly born into heaven. Blessing them, he said, Be steadfast and act manfully, for I will be always with you. Then he ascended, leading with him a noble multitude, opening a way to them, as Micah the prophet said, Thus the Lord, glorious, white, and ruddy, splendid, and radiant with joy, went before them, showing them the way. And they, singing and exulting most joyfully, followed him, saying, O oh, sing unto God, and sing praises unto his name. Magnify him that rideth upon the heavens, as it were upon a horse. Praise him in his name, 
and rejoice before him. O oh, that men would therefore praise the Lord for his goodness, and declare the wonders that he doeth for the children of men. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, thou art the Saviour of them, which put their trust in thee, bringing forth thy people with joy, and thy chosen with gladness. Set up thyself above the heavens, O God, and thy glory above the earth, that thy beloved may be delivered. Thou art gone up on high, making a prosperous journey for us, bringing us out into a wealthy place. Thou deliverest the prisoners in thy strength, giving us our desire. We will enter into thy house, and in the sight of thy angels will praise thee. Glory, praise, and honor be to thee, O Christ, King and Redeemer. Sing unto God, O ye kingdoms of the earth, sing unto the Lord. In the meantime, Michael, leader of the heavenly court, entering into that blessed country, announces that the Lord was ascending. Behold, all the orders of spirits, in due gradation, come forth to meet him. Not one remained who did not come to meet the Lord. And bending before him with all possible reverence, they conducted him with hymns and ineffable canticles. Who can describe the songs and strains with which they greeted him? Princes went before, joined with singers, and said, Alleluia, 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 O blessed King, who comest in the name of the Lord. Now to thee who reignest, behold, we chant our songs. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed art thou, O Lord, who sittest upon the cherubim, and beholdest the depths. Alleluia. Alleluia! Alleluia! Worthy art thou, O Lord, of all praise and honor. Alleluia! For thou hast gone gloriously. Alleluia! Let the heavens confess thy wonderful works, O Lord. Alleluia! And thy power. Alleluia! Behold now, the tribes go up, even the tribes of the Lord. Alleluia! To give thanks unto the name of the Lord, and to say to thee, Alleluia! to rejoice in the joy of thy race, that thou mayest be praised with thine inheritance. Alleluia! 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 In songs and praises such as these, they honored their Lord, exulting before him, and singing from one side to another. They celebrated with all reverence a glorious festival. And who shall describe their joy? Who, too, can picture the delight of all these most blessed spirits and holy fathers when they met together? For the supernal spirits, when they had shown reverence to our Lord and finished their canticles of joy, addressed the fathers, we may imagine with great sweetness. O princes of the people, we congratulate you that you are come hither. Alleluia! Ye are assembled around your God. Alleluia! And are greatly exalted. Alleluia! Sing to him who hath ascended above the heaven of heavens. Alleluia! Alleluia! And the holy fathers promptly replied, O ye princes of the people of the Lord, Alleluia! Our guardians and defenders, Alleluia! Joy to you and peace, Alleluia! Sing ye also to our King, Alleluia! Exalt in God our defender, Alleluia! 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 Then, bending towards one another, they said, We go with gladness into the house of the Lord. Alleluia! Alleluia! The venerable city of God shall receive us together. Alleluia! We are the sheep of the Lord's pasture. Let us enter into his gates and into his courts. Alleluia! With hymns and songs. Alleluia! For the Lord of hosts is with us. Alleluia! He is our protector. Alleluia! 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 See you how all rejoice and sing, for according to the prophet, God hath gone up with a merry noise, and the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Our Lord Jesus ascended in their sight for the consolation of his mother and disciples, that they might see him as far as they could. And then a cloud received him out of their sight, And presently he was with the blessed spirits and holy fathers before mentioned in his country. For thus the prophet's prediction runs, Who makest the clouds thy chariot, and walkest upon the wings of the wind? 
The wings of the wind are the summits of the wind, that is, the parts which proceed and are swiftest. He then ascended more quickly, when the cloud received him out of their sight. Then remained his mother, the disciples, Magdalene, and others, in adoration and with fixed gaze, intently watching him, as he ascended up into heaven and passed beyond their sight. And oh, what a sight it must have been to have seen the Lord thus gloriously ascend, and what to have seen and heard those blessed spirits and holy souls who ascended with him. Perhaps such a sight would have been too much for the soul, and have burst its bonds of flesh, and have drawn it to the skies. And while they steadfastly looked up, behold, two angels stood by them in white apparel, and said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Return then into the city and wait as he bade you. Consider then how the Lord had a care for all, for no sooner had he disappeared from them than immediately he dispatched his angels to them, that they might be comforted by the angels' testimony with them to the truth of the ascension of their Lord. His mother, if she heard the angelic message, might have humbly besought them to commend her to her son, and they, with reverence and willingness, have received such a charge. Similarly, the apostles Magdalene and the others entreated them, but they disappeared and then returned to the city, to Mount Zion, and their abode, as the Lord had bidden them. But the Lord Jesus, with the whole aforesaid august and magnificent throng, having opened the gates of paradise, which had hitherto been closed against mankind, entered with triumph, and bending before the Father's throne, said, I give thee thanks, O Father, who hath given me the victory over all my enemies. Behold our friends, who were held captive, I present to thee. But to my brethren and disciples whom I left in the world, I promise to send the Holy Spirit. I pray thee, therefore, Father, fulfill this promise. I recommend them to thee. Then we may imagine the Father rising and making his Son to sit at his right hand and saying, O blessed Son, I have given to thee all power and judgment. Therefore dispose all things as thou wilt concerning thy disciples and the coming of the Holy Ghost. Then all the holy fathers and most blessed spirits, who had fallen on their faces in adoration before the Father, arose, began anew their canticles, and sang praises before God. For if Moses and the children of Israel, after the passage of the Red Sea, sang a song unto the Lord, saying, Let us sing to the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously, etc. And Miriam, the prophetess, his sister, and other women following her, with timbrels and dances, saying unto God, How much more should this be done now, when all enemies are overcome? Similarly, when David brought up the ark of the Lord to Jerusalem, the whole people rightly chanted, and David with his singers struck their harps and all sang unto the Lord, accompanied by harps and timbrels, and David danced before the Lord with all his might. How much more then would they now do this, who were truly with the Lord himself? And if John, as it is related in the Apocalypse, heard a voice in heaven of a hundred and forty-four harpers harping with their harps, who sang, as it were, a new song before the throne of God and of the Lamb, whatever degree of joy may be signified by that, I cannot but imagine that a much greater joy would be the accompaniment of this mystery. They all sing, they all rejoice, they all are glad, all clap their hands, all dance, all exult with shouts of triumph. Truly now, in the heavenly Jerusalem, is heard the canticle of gladness, and through all its streets is heard, from every tongue, Alleluia!
Never from the foundation of the world was such a feast celebrated, never a Passover so solemn, nor ever will there be such a day again, except, perhaps, the day of judgment, when all the elect shall be presented there, in glorified condition. And therefore I asserted in the beginning that this solemnity, all things being considered, outstrips all others. Run, if you will, through all the rest, and you will admit the truth of what I say. A great feast, a great solemnity, is the incarnation of our Lord, and the source of all good. But it was so to us, not to him, for he was still enclosed in the chamber of the virgin's womb. A great feast is the nativity, but that also is so to us. For, as far as he was concerned, we must compassionate him, born to poverty, suffering, and reproach. Great indeed is the celebration of the mystery of the Passion, because then he bore our sins. For, as Gregory says, his birth would have been no advantage to us had he not redeemed us. But on account of the most cruel torments and most shameful death which he endured, it could neither be to himself, nor ought it to be to us, a subject of joy and gladness. Great too, exceeding great, is the true paschal feast of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus himself, both on his own account and for us, because he appeared triumphing gloriously, and we were justified thereby. Very venerable indeed is this festival, and of it alone the church sings. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, according to St. Augustine's comment. Yet this day of the ascension is holier than all the rest, and greater, and for this reason. True that the Lord rose again at Easter, yet he still remained as a pilgrim upon earth. Still the gate of paradise was shut. Still were the Holy Fathers not suffered to go to the Father, all of which was accomplished at the Ascension. And if you carefully consider the relation of these mysteries, all previous acts and sufferings of Christ tended to this end, without the attainment of which they were incomplete. For heaven and earth and all things therein were made for man, but man was made to obtain glory. Yet till this day none had ever attained it since the fall, however just he might have been. You see then how great and wonderful is this day. Likewise also a great festival is Whit Sunday, and one which the church solemnizes with much joy, and rightly so, for then she received the highest gift, the Holy Ghost. But this was for us and not for him. This day's festival, however, is rightly the most glorious feast of our Lord Jesus Christ, for today he began to sit at the right hand of the Father, and ceased to be a wayfarer. The Ascension is likewise, in a peculiar manner, the festival of all the heavenly spirits, because they received a new joy from their Lord, whom they had not seen there before, in the form of humanity and because today he began to restore their ranks, which had been broken through the fall of their brethren, and which were now filled up with such a mighty company of blessed ones, and especially by those illustrious patriarchs, prophets, and holy souls, who were today first introduced into the heavenly fatherland. If, then, we keep the festival of a single saint who has been translated into heaven, how much more should we celebrate the entrance of a numberless host, yea, of the Holy of Holies himself? It is the feast, too, of the Blessed Virgin, who saw today her son exalted, crowned with a royal diadem, as true Lord of all, ascending above all. It is also properly our own festival, for our human nature was today exalted above the heavens, because unless Christ had ascended, that gift of the Holy Ghost, which we so rightly celebrate with great solemnity, we could not have received. For he himself said to his disciples, It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. To strengthen my words, I will bring forward the statement of St. Bernard in his sermon on the Ascension of the Lord. 
This solemnity, dearest brethren, is truly glorious. It is the consummation and completion of all other mysteries. It is the happy conclusion of the whole pilgrimage of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Rightly do we keep with solemnity and rejoicing the day when the Son above the heavens, the Son of righteousness, unveiled himself to our gaze in this world. Great indeed is the joy and above measure our exultation when putting off the sackcloth he girds himself with gladness and dedicates the first fruits of our resurrection. But what to me are all these festivals if I am still bound to live upon the earth? I say then, to dwell thus in exile seems to me not much less tolerable than hell itself. In short, if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. Do you see then how of all festivals this day's is the sum, a day of results which puts to account the grace which has been already obtained, as all he did was for us, who for us was born? So the ascension was wrought for our sake, and brings us good, thus said St. Bernard. Manifestly, then, this day is more solemn than all the rest, and the soul which will love the Lord Jesus will rejoice more today than on any other day of the year. Therefore Christ said to his disciples, If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father. No day, then, in the heavenly country was ever so joyously solemnized, I believe, as this. And this joy and exaltation continued till the day of Pentecost. In this manner, you may meditate on the ascension. The ascension was at the hour of twelve, for at the third hour he sat at meat with his disciples. Although all in heaven ever rejoice beyond all description, yet we may picture to ourselves a special joy on the day of the ascension, to the sixth hour of the following day, a joy amongst the angels, as our Lord showed them some special favor and condescension. In like manner, on the second, amongst the archangels, on the third, amongst the principalities, on the fourth, amongst the powers, on the fifth, amongst the virtues, on the sixth, amongst the dominions, on the seventh, amongst the thrones, on the eighth, amongst the cherubim, on the ninth, amongst the seraphim, which are the nine orders of angels. And this rejoicing, perhaps, lasted till the hour of twelve on the vigil of Pentecost, and then the Holy Fathers kept the festival till the third hour of the Lord's day. End of chapter 97 from the Life of Christ by St. Bonaventure Narrated by Tony Capo Bianco. The text of The Life of Christ by St. Bonaventure is in the public domain. All of the pictures that were used in this video are also in the public domain. This has been a Virgo Potens production.